This week on the J-Turn, we're going through Motor Trend's instrumented testing procedures, and we're doing it in the Viper. understand the intricacies of Motor Trend's instrumented testing procedures, there's no better place to start than by talking with Kim Reynolds, Motor Trend's testing director. What are we doing here with the Viper? We're getting ready to do the figure eight test. In this case, we're doing a little bit more elaborate uh, things with instrumentation. These are ride height sensors. They go on here and it measures, as the car is moving, the distance to the ground. And you can determine the roll angle. Some other data, it's a GPS data acquisition system, so you're measuring the speed of the car. Uh, there's accelerometers as well that give you fore aft G's and lateral G's, a GPS version of that same data. So there's a lot of information being collected. So the figure eight, right, we've got these bursts of acceleration then into hard braking, so we can really learn a lot about the dynamics, the handling of the vehicle, right? This course, uh, again, is about a third of a mile around and it includes all the elements that you want uh, to learn about in basic vehicle dynamics. You have this cornering, you have this transition onto a straight, you can accelerate here, come up, brake, transition from braking, peel off the brake pedal, turn in the steering, see what it does initially. Then you have a mid-corner uh, handling, and then you have transitioning out, which means trying to blend power and lateral grip, and then you repeat it. left, right, transitions every which way, so it gives you all of the all the characteristics you're looking for, so it's a very effective test. And so how's it feeling? What do you think of how it's handling? Well, I haven't even started yet. Okay. Should we start? Yeah. <laughs> so there is a, a bit of understeer there. Lot of a uh, lot of power right at the ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And you know the reality is stability control is still on. Oh. We haven't even turned it off. So okay. some of that slipping around is it won't really get too far away. Nannies will keep us in line. Randy Popes calls my hair my G-force meter. <laughs> as we go around those turns. Well I wouldn't have that problem quite frankly. <laughs> After the figure eight, it's on to acceleration testing. So I met up with Scott Mortara to learn how to execute the perfect launch. All right, so there are a lot of misconceptions about launching a car. People think you just slam on the gas, but especially depending on what vehicle you're driving, that is not the case. Definitely not the case. A lot of cars you can just hop in and gas and go, but there are subtleties in what some cars like. Some like a lot of revs where you get the thing almost up on the stall converter. Others don't like that at all. All depends on the car. Trial and error, once we figure out kind of what the car likes, then we'll keep going at that pace and try and just keep getting better and better. Okay. Um, with a lot of cars, high horsepower cars like this Viper that we're in, it's all about the launch. And if you don't get the launch right, the rest of the run doesn't matter. Um, this is a car that you're talking, you got about a 100, 200 RPM difference between a good launch and either bogging it or just completely roasting the tires. So there definitely is some technique, and that's why we've chosen this car to uh, kind of demonstrate good, bad, how to uh, get the best out of a car. Right in the sweet spot. We've tested a Viper many times. Uh, this car tends to like about 27, 2900 RPM. I usually don't have anybody else in the car with me. Um, the little bit of extra weight will change that, so we'll see how it goes and adjust from there. Okay. Man, that's a small range, 27 to 29. <laughs> that one kind of liked that one. And it's just a matter of hitting your shifts. That was about 2,900. Let's just go up just to just around 3,000 RPM and see what she does. Ah, oh, see that one, it liked it. It caught pretty quickly. That's a 
another time. thing that you can make up time or lose time. Um, on a drag strip, you want your shifts as quick as possible. You want as minimal interruption as possible. On a track, you want to be much smoother, no urgency to make that shift because that that you know quarter of a tenth of a second that is important on the drag strip when we're running Excel numbers isn't as significant when you're lapping. And you can unsettle your car there more so. And right? you definitely can. Uh, the other thing you've got to remember too is with a car like this, um, the more we run, the more heat and the more pressure we build in the rear tire. So mm -hmm. the more heat to a point will increase grip. So as the, the heat increases and the grip increases, you then got to keep increasing your RPM. And again, there will be a point when the tires do get a bit too hot, a little too greasy, and what was working 10 minutes ago isn't working anymore because they've just gotten too hot at that point. So again, that was about 3,000. Let's keep going up and see where the spot's gonna be that this car just doesn't like launch. What's your estimate? What's your prediction? Oh, I'm going all the way to 35 on this one. We're gonna go go a little bit bigger because that one that one surprisingly caught well. So let's I'm going 36 and it's Price is Right style, man, so. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like that as much. Like at that all. one was my. Uh, that was that was 36. <laughs> Damn. It, it it started off okay. You heard the chatter, but then as the as the torque built in, it just couldn't hold it. So that one was just a little too much. Looks like just before 3500. Look at the stripes we laid on that. That was a massive light up. Yeah. Even into second gear, you can see how it curves a little yeah. bit there. Should I try launching it? Sure. So get it as close as you can. Wheel just tilts. Oh, for real? Doesn't, doesn't telescope. Come on, are you kidding? Dude, now I'm like, Ehh. Well, actually, it's not bad to be up on the wheel. Really? When you're going straight. Most of the time when I'm testing, I'm in an uncomfortable driving position. As long as you can reach the pedals comfortably and get the clutch all the way to the floor, all that good stuff. And look at dude, I got my knee like right up in here. Oh, you don't need to tell me about having knees in the dash. <laughs> okay, so what you're gonna wanna do, get yourself clutch in, mm -hmm. in first gear, you're just going to slowly roll onto the throttle, and as the RPM builds, right when you get to about the point where you want it to be, you just dump the clutch and pretty much flat foot it. Okay. And you'll see what happens. And if you got it right, it'll just it'll chirp a little bit and then go, or it'll bog, or it'll smoke tires. And that's kind okay. of the whole the whole point we're trying to make here. All right. So it's win-win. Exactly. <laughs> and then again, just make your shifts. Just make your shifts. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, that was a little bit of a bog. Yeah, that's, oh, and, and I'm shifting at 3,500 RPM. So don't even bother with the run, just back out of it. We'll loop around again. So what could I have done better? It's a real timing thing to get it, like I said, going off the clutch and onto the full throttle, because if you launch it kind of hard, which is what it was, but then don't get into all of it, it'll just kind of chatter and kind of bog, so. Okay, here we go, I'm not messing around anymore. There you go, there you go, much better, much better. And lift, there you go. Ease on the brakes. But no, that launch sounded good. There was the chatter, um, you know, and then again, hitting your shifts. And that's the, the whole thing. And then you just gotta put it all together at one time. Well, actually, that's just for one run. Yeah, and then we do, do it again. Yeah, again. and again, and again. <laughs> okay. Until you get the best number you possibly can. Well, this was very fun, learning all about the testing procedures. Thanks for bringing me along. Absolutely, hope we enlighten people a little bit to what we do for testing. It's not just hopping in and going. There is some, some subtleties and some nuance and some, some technique that goes into it. But with all that testing, I think it's definitely time to have a little fun. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I was short on my mark. But that was some balls on him. It was. He didn't yeah, flinch. I know, I know. He didn't flinch. <laughs> nice job, Kenneth. See, I never know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm always proud of them for getting the shot, but then I'm like, I don't want you dying. <laughs> so I don't know if I should encourage that. It's scary to go like right at the camera crew. <laughs> and yeah, we do that a lot. I know, I hate it. No. I hate when they're on the track. I'm just like, oh. I can't ignore you. It is not possible.